Hello, Pascaline. Hi. Hello, Antoine. Can you start by introducing yourself? Tell us who you are. Yes. Uh, my name is Pascaline Jessica Knight, and uh, I'm an artist that uh, principally works with silkscreen printmaking. And I've, uh, in the past, uh, done a lot of installation work. Um, but and a bit of video too. A bit of performance intervention video as well. Okay. Uh, and that's uh, I'm presently doing a master's degree, uh, an MFA at OCAD mm -hmm. in uh, Toronto. And but uh, you're originally from Montreal. I'm from Montreal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, we're sitting in Paris right now. <laughs> <laughs> At the, uh, in the garden of the Archive National. Yes, quite <laughs> quaint and lovely. <laughs> um, and yes, uh, but what I have been doing for the longest part uh, is silkscreen printmaking, but more so uh, is making little books mm -hmm. that were always sort of self-made and self-propelled. Um, I used to, uh, back in just uh, t the 2000s, I had a small press called Asphalt Press that I was uh, doing with uh, Brian Sanderson, and that lasted for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, on my own, I also just kept making these little yeah. booklets and, and so uh, when you were doing this press were you also publishing other artists as well i've never I've never published other artists yeah it was, I, it was always just it's you a all very along. personal <laughs> yeah it's mm -hmm. a it's a sort of a personal endeavor mm -hmm. often a, a, a theme would sprout in my mind and then i would think about the layout and mm -hmm. The first time that I've actually have been working uh, with another writer is uh, right now with a Swiss writer called Claudine Gaetzi. Mm -hmm. uh, she's based in, I think it's Lausanne, but I'm not sure. But in any case, she's a poet and it's the first time that I use someone's poem and mm -hmm. I can play around with the layout but I can't mm -hmm. alter the text like I do in most yes of because you also worked days. with uh, other people's writing yes. so this is uh, an appropriation somehow yes. of uh, Walter it, Benjamin yes I would call it um, would I call it an appropriation it's more like a an adaptation let's mm -hmm. say uh, where I, I cut out uh, Walter Benjamin's um, text, beautiful small text called Oeuvre d'art à l'époque de sa reproductibilité technique. I could probably translate that, but I won't waste my time looking for the translation. <laughs> yeah, people in my will head. see which one it is. Yes. <laughs> it's very famous. So, yes. And uh, what I did was I took another uh, title from Giorgio Agamben called L'homme sans contenu. The man and, without content. Yet yeah, the man without content, and I transformed it into the woman without content, mm -hmm. la femme sans contenu. And what I did inside the text is, I gutted out the content of the mm -hmm. text and the left, middle. Yes, and I left the, the words, the, the margin words. So one word, mm -hmm. one word is left just mm -hmm. to leave. And what it does, which it, what's nice, is that it leaves a silhouette, mm -hmm. which is sort of fits well with feminine stereotypes that we tend to mm -hmm. have still. Yeah, it's yeah. like a Venus somehow. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. Venus of text. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. And can you tell us about this one? Yes. So this one, I what I did was, uh, it, it actually kind of stems off from this one, which is uh, La Permutation, Les 647 000 uh, Permutations sur Marcel Duchamp, mm -hmm. which was a collage that I made. Uh, this one is originally uh, 10 feet by 10 feet, so each square is, um, uh, I can't remember the dimensions, but in any case, this is like a reduced, mm -hmm. reduced um, version of the, this collage, mm -hmm. and it's uh, Marcel Duchamp sort of belt and melted into a, a structure, mm -hmm. and inside you can find 
this one is, for example, the second, la 22e permutation sur 600,247. And so are you going to make uh, 600,000 uh, well, uh, books? Well, I'll keep doing books? it. Well, okay. uh, as long as I... I'm, so it's an open edition? It's an open edition. You, you do, you'll have to tell me this. if you eventually come to the, next, uh, to would, the last one. <laughs> I would love that. I'm not, I'm not even over 100, so... Oh yeah, this is, there's uh, a long way to go. There's a super long way to go. Okay. So from this kind of permutation, I also uh, made, found words that um, could be read and set in a square uh, format. Mm -hmm. So it could be read in many uh, okay. directions. Or like a palindrome? A, yeah, like a palindrome, but also uh, kind of like uh, how uh, the concrete poets would work, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. was really kind of working with the letters, creating a form, and mm -hmm. I'm really obviously fascinated by uh, Le Livre of, that never, doesn't exist of Stéphane Mallarmé mm -hmm. and his whole sort of uh, endeavor mm -hmm. to make the book mm -hmm. that would The ultimate book. The <laughs> ultimate book, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, and this book is called, Le, it's also a play on words, it's called Le Poids des Mots, but it has a little registered uh, R, so mm -hmm. it also has a play on word like Le Poids des Morts. Oh, okay. So there's, and the subject is so that would be the sort of the of link, death, the weight of death, but the weight, the weight that words also can mm -hmm. carry, so, mm -hmm. and all the words are around that, the weight that okay. they can have. And would you say that most of your artistic practice these days is uh, publishing or do you make other types of artworks? Uh, publishing or the art book is mm -hmm. always at the core of my work mm -hmm. somehow. Either by... Um, uh, it's almost like my th thinking process is built around the book, you know, the fact that the book has a spine the mm -hmm. fact that something is read, you know, from left to right, mm -hmm. what the space in the, what the corner, you know, affords in mm -hmm. terms of uh, potential for meaning and separation and, uh, how do you say, association. So mm -hmm. if it's not directly involves publishing per se, mm -hmm. it's always um, part of the thinking process, most okay. definitely. Yeah. And so, why do you publish this way? Why, why, did, why is it important for you to self-publish? Um... Well, there's a great amount of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the more freedom I have, uh, I don't like to be, you know, I don't like to be told what to do. and. Uh, the, you know, the underground, it's a, sort of been this kind of underground approach of just uh, a form of resistance too. Of uh, I can uh, print the amount I want, it can be crooked, which is something that I can't help. Most mm. of my stuff is crooked. And also just to be able to uh, experiment too with uh, different materials that I would either print on through silkscreen printing. Mm -hmm. um, I have one uh, ed edition that was a, a small book that uh, was folded into a into a, a underwear and mm -hmm. the underwear was printed over. So it just affords me a certain freedom that mm -hmm. uh, uh, fits with me and mm -hmm. yeah and um, when did you start publishing like that uh it was with asphalt no. press and it was in 1999 okay and what was your inspiration for this kind of uh, publication um mostly uh the desire to say something mm -hmm. and uh put it out there in a form. Uh, I was also part of the sort of underground craft. Uh, um, we had these craft art fairs that went on around Christmas. So mm -hmm. I was also into bookmaking at the time. So I would make a lot of journals that had nothing written in it. But mm -hmm. I also would just publish uh, these small amounts of 
small stories like we had one with Ashfeld Press called uh, No Matter What which was a beautiful message which people <laughs> just keep asking for it so yeah I think it's the motivation was mostly for us I think self-expression and mm -hmm. an alternative way of uh, speaking to things in a very personal way and, and not dictated by any, not even dictated by the demand or mm -hmm. or the trend or it's just kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a lot of your work that has to do with um, literature. Mm -hmm. um, is this one your main uh, inspiration? Uh, I didn't think so for the longest time but I'm realizing now that mm -hmm. uh, writing is a very com strong component in mm -hmm. my work and also in my way of thinking that language uh, the coexistence of language all my books are a mixture of French and English mm -hmm. and uh, that also kind of makes me fall into the cracks you know I sometimes represent like now I'm gonna go to Lausanne and represent the French Canadians mm -hmm. of Canada to Lausanne for this. Uh, so, event. do you consider your work to be Canadian somehow? Is there something uh, that. It's Quebecois because it's mm -hmm. even more than Canadian <laughs> because, because Canada calls itself bilingual, but mm -hmm. by no means is it. Mm -hmm. I think if any place is, is maybe a few enclaves and Quebec, mm -hmm. par la force des choses, we had to kind of. Mm -hmm. obviously become bilingual mm -hmm. um, but if I I mean I've tried to present my you know get my this book this very big book that I silk screened um, I was approached to publish it but then the minute and it was like juxtapositions of French and English mm -hmm. text but not the translation just the, mm -hmm. that the poem becomes a Fringlish poem mm -hmm. or you know some kind of a crisscross between the two and as much in England I I was received favorably but then when they found out that it was both languages they coiled it back and in yeah, yeah. France, French really scares people <laughs> it really away. does but but the the inverse is maybe uh, but even in France they, yeah, they so couldn't too. they were like well we need to translate those bits that are in English and ah. I was like well if I were to do a translation if I were to do it I would have to just make a whole other writing mm -hmm. in order to make it work mm -hmm. in what it wants to translate so mm -hmm. yeah so this is the, the Quebecois part of your work yeah and what else is important uh, in your work? Why, why do you make it and, and why does it feel so important to me? Uh, well, I think it, because it offers uh, something that um, I think I've touched on a lot of taboo subjects mm -hmm. in my work and it's mm -hmm. not always uh, Linear? It's not li never linear, mm -hmm. but, and it's not, never direct. But it, uh, I think that's the main reason is that there's a self-actualization. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really believe that utterance and expression, as a writing, is a is a is a way of realizing oneself, mm -hmm. and I think it's a definite way for other people to realize themselves and. The, these little books are very playful but at the same time they, they kind of by the side door mm -hmm. treat pretty have either heavy subjects you know they treat about universal subjects like death and mm -hmm. yeah okay. thank you so much well, my pleasure thank you <laughs>